Welcome to the Security Speakeasy Show, where we talk all things network security. Today, we're going to look into firewall data sheets. Firewall data sheets come in all different shapes and sizes and can be a little different and confusing to understand. So let's get right into it and let's take a look at debunking the data sheet. My name is Mohit, and I'm on the marketing team at Palo Alto Networks. Joining me today is Marcel Hoffman. He's a senior technical marketing manager who has been at Palo Alto Networks for almost five years. Yeah, thank you, Mohit, for having me on the show. Yeah, Marcel. Well, thanks for being on the show. I see some uh, cool artwork in your background. Where'd you get that from? Yes, yeah, so I have three little kids, and they uh, like to decorate my uh, background. So this is the latest one you probably haven't seen yet from Father's Day. Um, so really proud of the, the artwork that they give me here. Yeah, really cool work. Seems like they might have uh, art in their future. Yeah. All right, Marcel. Well, thanks for joining me. So let's, let's get started. I know that data sheets, firewall data sheets, can be a little confusing to understand. So what's the most common myth out there regarding these firewall data sheets? Yeah, I think the, the biggest myth out there is that people take data sheets at face value. Mm -hmm. um, and that is an, an issue because uh, these data sheet numbers are measured in an artificial environment with best case scenarios in mind. Uh, to give an example, um, another area where we often see data sheets is if you want to buy a new car, right? So do you know what the top speed is of a four-cylinder turbocharged 2020 Honda Civic? Um, I don't know, maybe 150 miles per hour. That's very optimistic. Uh, I also didn't know I had to look it up, but it's actually 137, I think, miles per hour. So I can tell you from my own experience, I come from a country, Germany, right, where there are no speed limits on the, on the highway. I can tell you that getting up to the speed requires, first of all, you know, a stiff tailwind, a lot of time, and, uh, you know, downward sloping road uh, to even get close to the speed. And this is the same for, for firewall data sheets. Uh, these numbers are um, measured in, in conditions in a lab, not in a, in a real world scenario. Um, we also have seen a lot of our competitors try to cram as many numbers into their data sheet as possible to make it seem like they would cover your specific situation. But in reality, um, it's, it's just, again, more numbers measured in this artificial lab environment. Yeah, because it's in this artificial, perfect, ideal conditions, it's not always exact because your environment is probably different. Exactly. We, we've seen in our own testing, we've seen dramatic differences in traffic mixes. A traffic mix is like the, you know, what different kinds of applications are you using, right? SaaS applications, internal applications, right? Uh, what protocols are you using? What's the packet size? All these things are what's called the traffic mix. And um, we have tested our own firewalls with one of our competitors' traffic mixes. And we have seen 50 to 100% uh, higher throughput with these traffic mixes. So I'm, I'm not saying our traffic mix is the best or the better one or the more realistic one. Um, I'm just saying that a traffic mix is highly subjective, any, any one of these traffic mixes, right? So it's um, ideal for like... The customer to standardize on a traffic mix when testing amongst various firewalls. Yes, it, it can give you a sort of an idea roughly where this firewall would fit in, in your environment, right? What kind of model you would need. Uh, but in the end, uh, you probably have to test it. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, can you give me some insights into more myths regarding firewall data sheets? Yeah, I think often people think that the, these data sheet numbers are applying to the way they want to use their firewalls as well, right? But security features are um, different, right? The, the configuration of your firewall is different. You want to enable a different kind of set of security features. And so this can also have an impact on your performance, right? Uh, when you look at our data sheets, we only give two numbers, basically. We tell you what's the app ID number. So this is just with application identification. Nothing, no other features enabled. And then the other one with all relevant threat prevention focused security features turned on. Uh, we can do that because we have the single pass parallel processing architecture where 
additional security features are not degrading the performance as much as most of our competitors. So that's also something to keep in mind that if you look at these data sheets, you have to remember what kind of features am I planning to enable and what will be my expected performance. Mm -hmm. uh, here again, only a test will tell you what your specific configuration will uh, perform like in your environment. Yeah, you have to understand your environment and what is unique about your environment and then understand how you can actually place that firewall within your environment before just yeah. reading a data sheet. Okay, that makes sense. And I know we make it pretty simple by just, like you said, offering two numbers to simplify all of this for the customer. Again, these numbers are also measured in ideal conditions, right? Mm -hmm. So all the caveats I talked to you about data sheets, they apply to us as well, right? So I'm not saying, you know, trust our data sheet numbers. Again, these are really good, uh, estimates for you know where roughly this firewall will perform is it is it low end mid end high end, um, but your traffic mix our traffic mix is guaranteed to be different from yours. Yeah. And given the huge performance impact that we've seen with changing our traffic mixes, changing out configurations, uh, only a proof of concept will really tell you what the the firewall will perform at. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this leads me to like my next question, like. When I'm just reading a data sheet, now I know I got to use a magnifying glass when I actually read yeah. it. So what should I double click into or what should I zoom into when I'm taking a look at this data sheet? Well, first of all, always read the fine print, right? A lot of these data sheets, they have figure one, figure two, figure three, right? And and you have to look into really the, the fine print on the, on the data sheet because it often tells you what features were enabled, what was the traffic mix, right? Uh, ask the vendor for what traffic mix did you use for that to give you roughly, you know, an estimate how close it is to your real environment. Um, that can help you to make an, you know, a reasonable assumption if this is close or not. Uh, a vendor should be able to share that with you. Um, also, uh, look at what security features were enabled, right? You don't want to uh, notice during or be in a situation where during an ongoing attack, you need a very specific security feature that you haven't used before, have to enable it, and then you see that your firewall will not be able to handle the additional performance impact. That's what you not want to do. Um, so a lot of our competitors, they rely on, on hyper-tuning the firewall, right? They do everything they can to get the firewall, you know, up to speed, right? Going back to the analogy with, uh, with the car. Right, some of our competitors they measure the firewall by taking out the doors, ripping out the seats, right, uh, getting rid of the trunk lining, and doing everything to make the car as light as possible. So we go as fast as possible, which is fine. It will, you will get a number, but will you ever drive a car like that? Probably not. No. Yeah, yeah. When I when I <laughs> want a car, I want to make sure that all the components are there and they are working, because I'm not just trying to buy four wheels and a. 10 metal box to go fast. <laughs> exactly. You, you want to be able to turn on your AC and the car just doesn't come to a grinding halt because it doesn't have enough power. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is a situation we've seen often where, you know, during ongoing attacks, uh, you need to enable some, your security team comes to you and says, hey, we really need to stop this. We need, uh, you know, let's say additional DNS security features. You turn it on, your firewall need to be able to handle that. Mm -hmm. uh, one feature that we have in our mid and high end firewalls that uh, is very important for these kinds of situations, is the separation of the data plane, which handles all the traffic and the management plane that handles the actual configuration of the firewall. That means if your data plane is under high stress, your firewall is pushing as many packets as quickly as it can, uh, the management plane still has resources left so that you can log into your firewall, make the necessary changes, enabling additional features or um, also making, you know, sometimes it's configuration issues that can cause the firewall to get under stress. So you still have a chance to fix your mistake because you can still log into the firewall. This is also yeah. very important. No, like that's a great point you made, the separation of the, uh, the data plane and the management plane. So like when something does go wrong, the admins can go in and course correct as well as like make the necessary changes. So to stop that. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And then, you know, going back to all of this, so the whole point of looking at a data sheet is to evaluate a firewall or a NGFW. So what are some other things that 
everyone out there should consider when it comes to evaluating an NGFW? Yeah, I think the the bottom line, right? The, the, the key takeaway from this discussion should be you have to perform a proof of concept. You have to get the firewall in your environment with your desired configuration, with your desired security features to be turned on. And then uh, you really need to evaluate what will be the real life performance for your specific environment. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. You know, going back to the car analogy, I just wouldn't look at a car ad on a TV or I wouldn't just browse like the spec sheets of a car on their website and just go and buy the car. I actually want to go to the dealership, maybe take a test drive, sit in the car, understand what I'm buying and make sure that it's the right fit for me and my needs. Exactly. You don't go to a dealership and say, I would like to have a car that goes 140 miles an hour. What do you have? Uh, there are probably other criteria that are important when you think about the car, right? Like, do you want to have a sedan, a convertible, an SUV? I don't know. So uh, unfortunately, what I've seen when I talk to customers and prospects, right, is often they are so fixated on the, on the data sheets, but there are so many other things. Uh, for example, when you do the proof of concept, also look at what does it look like the day-to-day -day administration of this firewall? Get your hands on this technology. Uh, some uh, vendors require you to buy additional helper products. They are never part of the initial conversation, but later on you realize, oh, uh, yeah, if you want to use this feature, you need to buy this other product. Or yeah, you need to uh, want to enable this um, additional feature, you, you need this other helper product. And so these kinds of surprises you want to avoid to have during the deployment phase. So in a proof of concept, with all your um, intended features being turned on, you will see what really the environment will look like. Plus you can, like you said, you can take a test drive and see what the firewall will look like uh, in your every day-to-day -day operation. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, when it comes to looking at firewalls, I definitely next time have to go a little bit beyond the data sheet to really understand if it's a good fit for what I'm looking for. Exactly. Well, Marcel, thanks for taking the time to be on the show. And thank you, everybody, for taking the time to view today's episode. If you like today's episode, hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment, and visit policenetworks.com for more information.